Hello, my name is Nicholas Collins and I'm Director at Optima Low Vision Services and Certified Low Vision Therapist. I'm going to talk to you today about central vision loss. And central vision loss can be caused by many different things, but by far macular degeneration and macular conditions are the highest cause of central vision loss. Central vision loss means that everyday tasks like reading, writing, recognizing faces can become very difficult for people. So simply picking up a book and reading is no longer as easy as it used to be. Passing somebody in the street, you don't perhaps recognize them because you look at their face, you can't recognize their face and their features. Many people I work with who have central vision loss find it difficult to adapt and use their vision in a better way. If you have central vision loss, your tendency is to look straight at what you want to see. And for lots of people, that no longer works very well. If the center of what you look at doesn't work, you may need to use a different part of vision, a healthier piece of vision. Eccentric viewing is a technique whereby rather than looking straight at something, you perhaps look in a different direction, off-center or eccentrically. If your peripheral vision remains stable and healthy, you may learn the technique to rather than look directly at what I want to see, is to look away from center. Eccentric viewing is not an easy task. It's not something that you pick up straight away. So what I'm talking about today is how to learn more about your own vision, how macular degeneration can affect your everyday tasks, but more importantly, how do we help with that? So learning the skills to make best use of the good vision that you still have. The reason why central vision loss causes so much problems for people is because the way that the eye has developed, the very central part of our vision, the macula, is the part of our eye that generates detail and colour vision. And how we use that piece of vision is by looking straight at something. It is your central vision. Your peripheral vision is used for an awareness of your surroundings, so you use that when you're walking out and about. So when you have central vision loss, your ability to recognise detail, fine print and colour, that becomes difficult, even though your peripheral vision may remain perfectly okay. Eccentric viewing is, is no longer looking straight at what you want to see. So when I mean viewing eccentrically, I mean rather than looking directly at an image, directly at the television, directly at somebody's face, or straight at a word, I'm going to look away from centre by, by moving my eye. So using eccentric viewing is, for example, if I'm looking at somebody's face, I look straight at your face, I can't see your face. But if I use an alternative different part of my vision, Instead of looking straight at you, I might perhaps look a slightly above or slightly below you. So I'm no longer using that central vision, I'm using the healthier peripheral vision instead. What's important to appreciate is not everybody with central vision loss sees in the same way. Everyone is individual. So what I'm going to talk about is different types of central vision loss. I'm going to use the word scotoma. Scotoma is the area of reduced visual function. So basically, the bit that doesn't work as well as it once did, and I'm talking about central scotoma, so the central part of vision that's not quite as good as it once was. The first type of scotoma I'm going to talk about is what we call a relative scotoma. This is where people describe their vision as blurry, foggy, misty. So I look at television, I can see the image, I can see the picture, but it's not as clear as it once was. The colours perhaps are drained from the image. I look to somebody's face, I can see their face, I can see their features, but not in the detail I once did. So I can't tell what colour eyes they've got, perhaps if they're wearing jewellery or makeup, I lose the detail. I still can use my central vision, but it's not working as well as it once did. Reading becomes difficult with somebody with a relative scotoma because the print becomes fainter and fainter and fainter. The print just isn't clear enough for me to now read. I can see the prints there, but it's, it's just too small to see perhaps. Somebody with a relative scotoma often benefits quite a lot with lighting. Task lighting is very important for lots of people who have relative scotoma because you can blast through that fog. So, for example, if I'm trying to read the newspaper, I can see the print, but it's not as clear as it once was. If I bring a good task light in and increase the contrast and the brightness, I can now read. So somebody with a relative scotoma may still be able to use their central vision. So again, not everybody with central vision loss needs to use a technique like eccentric viewing. Even if your central vision isn't quite as good as it once was, it may still be the best part of your vision. If that central area is too foggy, too misty, too indistinct, whereby things appear clearer if I look away from them, 
that person is more likely to benefit from a technique like eccentric viewing. The next type of scotoma is what we call an absolute scotoma. There's absolutely no vision in that area. So when I look at somebody's face, either the head disappears, so it's like they don't have a head, or there's a shape of a head, because there's just no ability for my eye to turn that information into, into vision. People who have an absolute scotoma notice that things come and go, they disappear. So if, for example, you're looking at an eye chart in a hospital, you look at the top letter, it disappears, you don't see it. You may look away from it, oh, it comes back, but then you look back at it, it disappears again, because that letter is coming in and out of that absolute scotoma you have. It can be quite confusing having an absolute scotoma, because you perhaps put something on the table in the morning, get your drink of water, look back at the table, and it's disappeared, because you're looking straight at it with an area of non-vision. What's important to realise is we don't walk around with a big black blob of missing vision. That's not how scotoma typically appear to people. It's an area of, of nothingness, no vision. So you walk around and it doesn't appear that your vision's affected that badly, but you can't see that detail or that missing piece of vision. When reading, with an absolute scotoma, words can disappear. I often hear people say, oh, I can see the beginning of the word, the end of the word, but the middle disappears. Letters come in and out, they jump in and out of, of vision because you're looking at it with that bit of vision that simply doesn't work anymore. Also what people will sometimes say to me is, I can see the words but they tend to jumble or they tend to merge or, or run into each other because what the brain is trying to do is trying to fill in the blanks in many ways. So when I'm walking around my brain can predict and fill in what it thinks should be there but for accuracy and for detailed tasks like reading the brain just can't do that. So if I have an absolute scotoma where the centre doesn't work at all I need to use eccentric viewing. If I try to magnify my vision with an absolute scotoma Three times nothing is nothing. Six times nothing is still nothing. I'm magnifying an area of vision that's not there. So if you have an absolute scotoma, eccentric viewing is more likely to be beneficial because what you will do is you will move that poor vision away from centre and replace it with a healthier piece of vision. The third type of scotoma is what we call an edema. People would describe the vision as having distortion in their vision. If you think about the retina, like wallpaper, flat against the back of a wall, if, for example, you have damp behind your wallpaper, it's going to bubble and bulge it. Something similar can happen with the retina, where the light comes through the front of your eye and is no longer hitting a flat surface. So when looking at a window frame, the frame is distorted. For reading, this can also be difficult because the lines are no longer straight. They perhaps bow into each other. The letters become distorted. So if we have considerable central distortion with our vision, we may benefit from eccentric viewing. Again, looking straight through a magnifier with distortion, you're going to magnify that distortion. So eccentric viewing for people who have considerable central distortion may be a better option. The fourth type of scotoma is what we call a multiple scotoma. So rather than having one lump of missing vision, we may have patches or islands of missing vision. Now, this can become difficult because I look at somebody's face and I may see miss out one of their eyes perhaps. Reading is often a task that becomes very difficult with a multiple scotoma. Rather than missing a whole word, you may miss parts of words. So letters come in and out of the missing pieces of vision you may have. Whether you need eccentric viewing with a multiple scotoma depends on where your best vision is. If your best vision is in the centre, then eccentric viewing is just not needed. But if the islands are in the middle or obscuring what you want to see to do, that's when we would teach somebody eccentric viewing. The fifth type of scotoma is what we call a ring scotoma. So we have a central loss. So I look at somebody's face, I can't see their face. I look at television, I can't see the screen. And I find reading is difficult. But with a ring scotoma, the very centre of the vision still remains good. It's like looking through a polo mint or a donut where there's a big missing piece of vision, but there's an island of really good vision still in the centre. Now somebody with a ring scotoma may actually be able to read quite small print because that little bit in the middle still works really well. With a ring scotoma, eccentric viewing may just not be needed because the best vision you have may be still in the centre. For other tasks, like watching television or recognising faces, we may need to use eccentric viewing because that small island in the middle just isn't big enough to get us a good image when watching the television. But for detailed tasks, like reading, eccentric viewing just isn't necessary. I need to emphasise that when I talk about the different types of scotoma, I'm not saying you have one or the other. 
lots of people have perhaps a combination of scotoma. So you may have a bit that's blurry with a bit that's distorted. So by describing the different types of scotoma, I'm trying to emphasize that some people do need to use eccentric viewing and other people don't. So understanding how your vision works is very, very important. Whether your central vision still is the best piece of vision, then you don't need eccentric viewing. Or if you can't see when you look straight at something, you're more likely to need to use eccentric viewing. Eccentric viewing is something that takes time to master, however. For how many years of your life, you've looked straight at something if you want to see it. Eccentric viewing is using your vision in a different way. That takes time to adapt and to master. So what we always recommend with people is they, they practice. Understanding what they should do is important, but that practice makes things easier. So little and often is what we would suggest. So practice when watching the television, practice when recognising faces, and also with reading, it's important to use eccentric viewing. With reading, eccentric viewing also needs a technique called steady eye strategy. Where in reading normally, you look straight at the first word. Then your eye will move to the next word, the next word, the next word. We develop what we call a saccade. So your eye moves along the line in order to read. With central vision loss, that becomes difficult because your tendency is to look at the word. And that may not be the best place to look. So whilst you're learning eccentric viewing, learning how to use your vision in the best place, you may not look straight at the word. But what also helps is steady eye strategy. Take your time, get the first word as clear as you can. Keep your head still, keep your eye as still as you can, and you move the book across so the words pass through the best vision you have. Very much like an autocue or a ticker tape where the words pass through the good vision you have. Steady eye strategy can be the difference between being able to read more comfortably and struggling. Steady eye strategy also works very well when we use magnifiers. So traditionally people would move the magnifier across the page, but that may become difficult with central vision loss. So we use steady eye strategy with magnifiers. So you put the magnifier in the right place, take your time to get the first word as clear as you can. Some people use eccentric viewing, some people don't need that. But once you've got the first word as clear as you can, keep your head still, keep your eyes still, keep the magnifier still, and you move the book instead. So the words scroll through and it's easy to read. So using steady eye strategy with magnifiers can sometimes take a bit of practice. Again, little and often is important. But other people choose, rather than using magnifiers, to use electronic devices. And with many electronic devices, you can use scrolling text. The MD EV Reader works very much like an auto cue, where the words scroll across the screen. To help you maintain the best place to look, the MD EV Reader also has a target. So you place the target in the position you have to look, look in that position, perhaps make the target disappear, and then keep your eye in that good place you've found. The words scroll through and makes reading easier. The MD EV Reader is also a very good practice tool. Little and often, as I said, you might practice a couple of minutes at a time until this technique becomes much more of a habit for you. Once it becomes a habit, you'll do it naturally. With the app, you can scroll text across the screen. Depending on your preference, you can choose the color options that suits you best. For example, white on black, black on white, or indeed, yellow on black. 